there are seven very surprising signs that you're eating too much sugar. I think most people know the classic signs of eating too much sugar, which is fatigue, brain fog, belly fat, cravings for carbs, cavities. But I need to clarify exactly what sugar is and the difference between a sugar and a carbohydrate because there's a lot of confusion in the area of like complex carbohydrates or simple carbohydrates or simple sugars. Like it's a big blur for a lot of people. A carbohydrate consists of three things, sugar, fiber, and starch. But starch is the hidden sugar that no one's talking about. Now, of course you have like starch in vegetables, but then you also have starch in this stuff right here, right? Or this stuff right here. So what actually is starch? Starch is sugar, okay? It's just a bunch of sugar connected together. And so the word that they use to describe it is poly, which means many, saccharides, which means sugar. So when you're eating starch, you're actually eating sugar, okay? And when we talk about starch in the grocery store, we're talking about this stuff right here, powdered starch. We're not talking about potatoes or vegetables. We're talking about ultra-processed food, calorie starch. And this starch will spike your blood sugars way, way, way higher than actual sugar will. On the glycemic index, you have table sugar, which is 65, you have glucose, which is 100, but there are starches like maltodextrin, which can go up to about 185. That's like a massively high spike. And it's not just maltodextrin, it's like modified food starch and modified corn starch. And it's pretty wild because you can make starch from corn, you can make seed oils from corn, and you could make sugar, like in glucose syrup or corn syrup from corn. You can buy one metric ton of corn for $198. Now from that investment, how many boxes of cornflakes could you make? And cornflakes are mostly made out of corn and you can buy those from Walmart for about $4 a box. So $200 of corn will turn into 3,636 boxes of cornflakes giving you profits of $14,500. That's a 7,150% profit margin. Now, what other investment can you get over 7,000% profit from a raw material to a finished product? Can you do it with meat? No, meat has like a 30% margin. So somehow cornflakes and Cheerios and even vegetable oils are not attacked for being unhealthy, they're heart healthy, but meat, for example, is vilified. That's, that'll cause cancer. But anyway, I digressed from the topic, but I think it's important to know that the biggest reason for ultra processed food, AKA junk food, is massive profitability. All right, so now let's dive into the seven surprising signs that you're eating too much sugar. Okay, number seven is reduced collagen. When you consume too much sugar, you're going to produce less collagen. And that's going to show up in loose skin, more wrinkled skin. People that eat more sugar are going to age prematurely. Number six, a chronic white tongue. So you have a white tongue that just doesn't seem to go away. That is a form of candida because you're eating too much sugar. You're feeding this fungus and it's continuing to grow. I do not think you can get rid of this candida without eliminating sugar from the diet because it loves these simple sugars. And number five, we get into chronic sinus problems. Most chronic sinus problems are a fungus called Aspergillus is the usual type. And that microbe actually feeds off of sugar too. So again, I don't think you're gonna be able to get rid of a chronic sinus infection unless you completely get rid of sugar because it keeps living off the sugar that you consume. All right, number four, red or pink gums. You brush your teeth and you see a little pink in the toothbrush. That is a very mild version of scurvy where you're having a vitamin C deficiency. So when you eat sugar, you block vitamin C. And one place that it shows up is in your gums. All right, number three is low testosterone. That's right. Sugar will lower testosterone. That can lead to erectile dysfunction, decreased libido, and also difficulty building muscle as well because testosterone is involved in that. Number two, susceptibility to infection. That's right, uh, having too much sugar will weaken your immune system to the point where you're more vulnerable to acquire 
an infection. And the number one sign that you're eating too much sugar, and this is actually very surprising, high levels of adrenaline. Too much sugar damages the cell's ability to make energy in the mitochondria. And so the way that the body compensates for that is by increasing adrenaline, not just for energy, but to help mobilize glucose and to make new glucose for fuel. That's called gluconeogenesis. High adrenaline doesn't come from mental stress. It comes from physical stress or stress that happens in your cells because you're not able to make enough energy. And so this is why you might notice when you're fatigued that you have a lot of nervous energy, restlessness. That's the big symptom of a mitochondrial damage and a low vitamin B1 because the motor is broken. And vitamin B1 is a spark plug to help uh, activate it. And the more sugar or starch, the more requirement for B1, and then it kind of puts out the flame. So now you get this nervous energy or this lactic acid buildup. So this leads to insomnia, restless leg syndrome, and also the adrenaline is gonna affect your digestion and also increase clotting in the bodies, heart attack and stroke. Now, since I did mention ultra processed food calories, if you have not seen this video on maltodextrin, you should check it out. I put it up right here. If you had to pick the worst ingredient on the planet, what would you pick? And I'm talking about an ingredient that's in a lot of foods, not some banned dangerous chemical, but some ingredient that is very pervasive in our foods. What would you pick? Go ahead and type it down in the comment section. The ingredient that I'm gonna talk about is much, much higher on the glycemic index than glucose. Now, what is the glycemic index? It, it is a scale that measures how fast a carbohydrate is absorbed and spikes your blood sugar. So at 100, you have glucose, okay? So that's pretty high, right? Now, glucose is a monosaccharide, okay? It's just one sugar. When you combine two different sugars, like glucose and fructose, you get sucrose, that's table sugar, okay? And because fructose is lower on the glycemic index, it's gonna pull the glycemic index down a bit to roughly about 72. That's a disaccharide. Now, saccharide means sugar and di means two. And then glucose is a monosaccharide, it's just one sugar. So the reason why I'm talking about the disaccharide or the monosaccharide is because this ingredient is a polysaccharide, which means many different sugars that are combined. However, this polysaccharide is a lot worse than glucose, even though it's a polysaccharide. So it is the ingredient that is the highest on the glycemic index. I don't know of any other ingredient that's higher than this thing I'm gonna tell you. And that ingredient is maltodextrin, okay? Now, maltodextrin doesn't sound that bad, like malto. Well, that sounds pretty natural. And dextrin, it doesn't end with os, like all the sugars end with, like glucose, fructose. So dextrin, it doesn't sound like a sugar, but maltodextrin behaves like a sugar, but it's not classified as a sugar. So here's the problem. When you read the label, okay, if something has maltodextrin in it, it does not have to be classified as a sugar, okay? It's classified under the total carbohydrates. So this can be very misleading because you don't know how much sugar that's in that product. So somehow manufacturing companies came up with this loophole because they know a lot of people are against this added sugar. And so even on their website, certain chemical companies that make maltodextrin actually use it as a marketing thing. This is what it said on one of their uh, websites. Many soft drinks and other flavored beverages contain maltodextrin in their formulas so they can have a lowered amount of sugar on the nutritional facts label. Wow, that is a great marketing strategy. So the problem with maltodextrin is that it behaves like sugar, yet it's not listed as sugar. So it's in a lot of different foods and you're not being notified, you're not being aware of how much sugar you're actually consuming. Now, the reason why maltodextrin is higher on the glycemic index than glucose is because it has a much faster absorption rate in your stomach. Apparently the enzymes act on this man-made synthetic sugar-like carbohydrate much faster than actual glucose. 
And so, yes, it is a man-made synthetic sugar. It's made with high heats. It's made with chemicals. It's made with acids. So it's a highly processed carbohydrate that is extremely inexpensive. You could get at a wholesale cost, like 30 grams of maltodextrin for less than a penny. Now you're probably thinking, well, uh, I don't consume maltodextrin. It's in, not in any of my foods. Well, I'm just going to list some of the foods that it's in. Um, it's in supplements, okay, big time. It's in even the natural flavorings. I had to really work hard to find a company that flavored our some of our nutritional products that did not contain maltodextrin. And unfortunately, those flavorings were a lot more expensive than the ones that had the maltodextrin. When you buy herbal formulas that are extracts, like they'll say, I don't know, ginkgo biloba or turmeric, and it says like 10 to one or five to one extract, usually they're using maltodextrin as a drying agent to turn it into a powder. Even stevia, when they turn into a powder, many times is made with maltodextrin. So here you are trying to do low carb when you're getting a lot of carbohydrate. But of course, it's only listed in the total carbohydrates, not the added sugars. Even powders that are made from oil, like MCT oil, and even like certain fish oil powders, okay? Now I have a cod liver oil powder that does not use maltodextrin. It's the only one out there that doesn't use it. And it took me a long time to find the company that didn't use the maltodextrin. Performance gels. So let's say you're gonna do a long distance marathon, okay? And you need that little gel pack to give you that carbohydrate energy to keep going. Well, the first ingredient, maltodextrin. So as an athlete, I don't think you wanna take something super high on the glycemic index to start spiking your insulin. Then you have the energy drinks, okay? The protein powders, the electrolyte powders. Many of them have this added maltodextrin. Even in the vitamin forms, as it forms like citrates, like potassium citrate or magnesium citrate. The infant formulas, the infant foods, unfortunately have maltodextrin. The weight gain formulas, a lot of times the first ingredient is maltodextrin. But if you look at the label, it's low in sugars. It's very high in carbohydrate because they don't have to list it as sugars. Beer has maltodextrin, thus the beer belly. Animal feeds have maltodextrin. Many keto products have this uh, hidden maltodextrin, which by the way, I'm going to be putting a list on my website very, very soon. And I'm working very quickly on this. So you can have a list of what foods have maltodextrin and what foods do not, because sometimes they sneak it in there. A great majority of the diet products out there, the diet powders, the diet protein bars are loaded with maltodextrin. Many of the soups that you consume, desserts have maltodextrin, ice creams, cereals, snack products, and even intravenous nutrition. The IVs that they'll give people to rehydrate them have maltodextrin, sauces, medications. So maltodextrin is very pervasive in our food supply. Unfortunately, it's used to give the, it's called the, the mouthfeel. It gives a very smooth texture. So it makes it feel good in your mouth. It's also used as a volume enhancer, as a filler, just to increase the volume. Like I said before, they use it as a spray to dry certain things, both oils and proteins and, and even nutrition, unfortunately. It's been used as a fat replacer for certain diet foods because they want it low fat, right? And so they can put this in there because it actually gives you the texture of fat when it's really a carbohydrate but now they're using maltodextrin in a different form, okay? It's called resistant maltodextrin. It's like a resistant starch. They change the chemistry from this starch to a fiber. However, a lot of the research that has been done on this is been done from industry, and I just don't trust the results right now. It's kind of an experiment. Uh, there's a big difference between consuming synthetic man-made fiber and fiber from vegetables like celery or salad. So now you're gonna see a lot of information on these functional food fibers that are now considered health food. And they're in a lot of keto foods as corn fiber, tapioca fiber, 
and they're called resistant maltodextrin. So who knows if they're GMO or not, or if they have traces of chemicals, and there's not a lot of information on the manufacturing process. Personally, I'm going to get my fiber from actual vegetables. And as I was studying about this topic, I found maltodextrin is also classified as an insecticide. Go figure. And the other big problem with maltodextrin is it depletes nutrition. You see, anytime you have a carbohydrate or a sugar and you consume it without nutrients, in order to metabolize that carbohydrate, it takes nutrients, B vitamins, calcium, potassium, things like that. And so when you're consuming a lot of refined carbohydrate, it's going to deplete your reserve of nutrients. So you end up with less nutrition if you're consuming these carbohydrates. And all this boils down to a much greater spike in insulin, which is behind so many health problems. So personally, I'm going to stay away from maltodextrin. It's, they're really doing an experiment on people. The jury is still out on the resistant starch. Uh, time will tell, but it's very difficult, if not impossible, to find an independent study to truly evaluate the so-called health benefits of maltodextrin. Now, if you have not seen my video on the glycemic index and something called the glycemic load, I put that video up right here. Check it out.